Hello chess friends and welcome to the of Chess channel and welcome to a very very special story that happened today Abhimanyu Mishra the master the prodigy from the USA become, became now the world's youngest grandmaster in chess history really really brilliant stuff congratulations Abhimanyu I wish you all of the best I wish you that you even become the world champion in chess one day but uh, as I said this is simply a great great fact for us because chess is evolving this uh, this uh, ratings are getting higher you see 10 year old uh, 11 year old kids are really really brilliant in chess because of the fact that we can now analyze some games with some computers and of course if you have a great coach uh, like probably Abimanyu had uh, then of course with some computer relations with the great opening prep with uh, of course um, explain the middle game strategies with end game strategies then you can become really really uh, strong in chess and that's actually what happened probably with Abimanyu Misha because I've analyzed now many of his great games and he has really brilliant theoretical novelties which is really great for a 12 year old kid I've watched now many theoretical novelties by Abimanyu uh, and that's actually a great fact for us because uh, you see chess is not uh, finished uh, this record that maybe Abimanyu has now uh, will be broken also I think in the near future that's not the absolute record that uh, Abimanyu has here because also uh, Sergei Karakin's record wasn't also an absolute record because uh, we see now um, these kids are playing these kids uh, know their stuff they know their theory they know their strategy they know their tactics that's why I think even in one day uh, this record by Abimanyu Bishop will be also broken but that's actually not the point about this video okay we have said now the record is broken but i wish really abimanyu the best because i wish him that he stays calm that he stays uh, really focused in chess because uh, i think that maybe if abimanyu misha becomes one day the world champion in chess and maybe someone breaks his record uh, in the world's youngest uh, grandmaster in chess history uh, then probably manu misha i think will be more satisfied with the fact that he's a world champion than with the fact that he was maybe one the once in chess history the world's youngest uh, chess grandmaster so ex actually it's a great of course uh, um, example what uh, what Abimanyu did here but it's actually not so important if you're not continuing to pressure your opponents if you're not to continue to study so as I said in this video I wanted to also hear a little bit back Abimanyu uh, to continue to try hard to really uh, to try to improve himself because if you stay upwardly in chess then you not gain anything you not gain any any rating points you're not winning tournaments so that's why you have to stay calm study really hard uh, keep your uh, keep her focus on what you want to do what you want to get out of out of the chess and that's why as i said i wish you all of the best but i in my opinion and nothing will, will, will be wrong with abimanyu's career because he's so focused he's so dynamic in his game so that's why i don't worry for abimanyu i wish him i think he is maybe one day the future world champion in chess so let's check out one, one great game played by abimanyu it's now from the last tournament that uh, abimanyu played uh, in in hungary it's not the game that uh, everyone will probably not cover uh, it's not the game uh, with which Abimanyu became now the world's youngest grandmaster in chess history I wanted to show you another game I wanted to show you how great uh, uh, Abimanyu is prepared when it comes to chess openings and how uh, great he sees some uh, tactical possibilities in the middle game so that's why I think this game uh, is maybe slightly better than this one uh, in which he became the world's uh, youngest grand grandmaster in chess history because uh, in that game he had several inaccuracies his, mis his opponent Make, made several mistakes in accuracy so uh, it was sort of a, a game in which uh, the outcome could have been really different now in this game I wanted to show you this game because it was basically a one-way ticket a great great attacking game by Abimanyu Mishra so let's check out now the game here d4 uh, his opponent was here uh, Agoston Juhaj uh, he's a feeder master from uh, from Hungary d4 uh, here um, Knight to f6, Abimanyu plays the move c4, and here Juhaj played uh, g g6. We have knight to c3, and now after move d5, we have the Grunfeld uh, defense on the board. Here, knight to f3. Here, uh, the three knight variations on the board, which is, in my opinion, one of the best ways uh, to beat the Grunfeld defense. Uh, I like different ideas against the Grunfeld because, first of all, I don't play even the move knight to c3. I play first the move knight to f3, and then I take it out. I not allow here the trading of uh, ideas here on around the square c3, but here you see now also uh, Abimanyu's preparation with the move knight to f3 we have bishop to g7 and now queen to b3 this is now the so-called Russian variation of the Grunfeld defense the idea is clear we want to stay a little bit focused here in the center we want to have uh, still this dynamic in the center we're waiting black to take uh, here with the pawn on c4 because what we don't want to do is to 
take like this c takes d5 knight to d5 then we're getting into normal grunfeld ideas then e4 knight takes c3 b takes c3 and then c5 will happen and then of course uh this position has been played millions and millions of times here abimanyu played really this russian variation he's uh, now attacking the c, c, c this d5 upon further forces basically black black town to react and here um, in this uh, in this particular position you has played d takes c4 we have queen to c4 the queen is a little bit weird here that's actually um not the best part of, of this old Opening, although you're getting your pawn center with the move e4 white can build this uh, pawn central control with the d pawn and with the e pawn and also with this uh, centralized knight but you have one problem as we said the queen is really on a net on on a natural square the queen can be uh, further kicked away by some minor piece activity so so far uh, the main now goal for white here is to secure the queen uh by by moving it somewhere else so here uh, after move calcing we have now the move e4 uh, here you have played the move uh, a6 we have now bishop to e2 so uh, i Manu has now uh, to Calgary has now to develop further his pieces now we have a b5 we have queen to b3 and here you have played here a great great move uh, c5 c5 is actually one of the best ways here because it's a temporary pawn sacrifice but with the idea after d takes c5 to play the move bishop to b7 you see now this pawn is hanging so you have to make something here uh, so that's why here Abimanyu played the move e5 but with the move e5 you have exposed yourself a little bit now there are two weaknesses it's the weak c5 pawn but also now the e5 will become a weakness because here you have played now the move knight to d7 and the problem is that you cannot take uh, they can play that you cannot play the move e6 you would love to play now this move but actually it's not a possibility because we'll simply play knight takes c5 okay you can have your fun with e takes f7 but now after rook to f7 you see the queen is endangered you can play maybe queen to c2 but now after move knight to c6 i think uh, black will get another tempo with knight to b4 or similar ideas queen to c7 or queen to b6 would be an opportunity here rook to d8 so as i said the white queen gets always in danger here so so far taking out the pawn on f7 or by playing the move e6 is so far not a great tactical possibility so so far this tactic is not working so that's why uh, abimanyo realized probably his tactical problems play now bishop to e3 protecting uh, now his pawn on uh, c5 here in the continuation we we have e6 by um um, by uh, Yukash he is preventing now finally the move e6 because now the bishop is out now rook to d1 would be also sort of a threat so so far e6 a great move here castling played by Abimanyu and now queen to c7 and now the fun already starts here Abimanyu plays a great move rook to d1 although maybe the engine suggests here something like a4 uh, breaking through uh, here on the queen side but I think this move rook to d1 is a great move because you see now actually the great ideas of Abimanyu Mishra now in the game in the continuation of the game you have tried now knight to c5 uh we have now queen to a3 the queen is again a little bit weird here but the queen is so far not endangered anymore that's actually the main issue here for black now black cannot attack further the queen after we move queen to a3 here we have knight to d7 you has retreats but now a great move by Manu queen to e7 he's pinning now this knight against the queen the knight is a little bit paralyzed you see these uh, pieces are not to develop so if you play knight to c6 you simply lose your uh, knight to d7 so that's why you have played first to move rook to c8 so you see black has several problems to develop the pieces and uh, here in the continuation of the game again a great move here by uh, abimanyu knight to e4 because um, if you take now uh, bishop to e4 uh, that's actually not a possibility because you get simply here knight to g5 you get the counter attack against the bishop and then and you lose simply the tactical battle here around around the square f7 so you will be forced to play something like knight to f8 maybe then queen to c7 but again you lose simply uh, here the bishop and uh, i think black is here uh, tactically lost because after queen to c7 rook to c7 we have here this one even if you try bishop to e5 the problem is now this one you get rook to d8 and then you have several problems here on the eighth rank now also there is one threat maybe to play even the move bishop to h6 but here the problem is you cannot move the knight because your rook is hanging also you cannot move the rook because uh here the um, bishop is covering the a7 square so it's a really paralyzed position here by black on the queen side so here after move knight to e4 great move here by abimanyu we have now a uh, queen to d8 here by uh yuhash he's trying uh, to trade off the queen simplifying the game and okay abimanyu accepts the challenge but with a great idea again to simply trap the rook rook now how abimanyu will trap the rook rook to d8 we have bishop to g5 great move by abimanyu we have uh, rook, uh, rook to f8 and now knight to to d6 which comes with a great tempo against the bishop after move uh, bishop to d5 now bishop to e7 and you see now all of the squares are taken for the rook the rook is now trapped so in the continuation of the game we have knight to c6 we have bishop to f8 uh here by um abimanyu we have um 
knight to f8 here in the continuation we have knight to g5 attacking simply the f6 f7 weakness which is now the main target and the problem is now you cannot even protect it uh because even if you try here something like knight to e5 uh to protect uh, somehow maybe your f7 first to get f4 and then uh, you have to move the knight and then of course the f7 is of course again taken that's actually what happened here f4 uh played by abimanyo we have knight to c4 bishop to c4 we have b takes c4 here you has plays also a very very interesting idea he's at least creating some madness now on the queen side you see now the b2 pawn is a weakness if the b put uh, if if the b2 pawn is taken then also the c3 can be moved then of course maybe with the support of the rook this pawn on the c file could roll with the support of the bishop then of course uh, black uh, could have also some kind uh, some kind of a counter-attack black could also have some great attacking opportunities so here in the continuation for b takes c4 we have knight to f7 abimanyo accepts the challenge takes now the pawn on f7 we have bishop to b2 you see this pawn is very very dangerous c3 c2 c1 is now the serious threat in the continuation we have knight to e5 played by abimanyu and now c3 we have knight to c4 and now comes actually the mistake uh here by yuhash he's plays them he plays the move rook to b8 the better idea is simply to play bishop to c4 uh here knight to c4 then c2 would be a opportunity then maybe after knight to uh, b2 you can take but now we can take out this one although here maybe white is slightly better because of this healthier pawn structure this could be maybe a long-term weakness but i think this game could end in a draw because uh here it's a simplified game of course both players um don't have such a great advantage so that in my opinion in the top grand master level this game would end uh would end with a draw for sure so you have to move knight to c4 uh you have played the move rook to b8 and it's actually a mistake because now it gives time here abimanyo to regroup to cover finally the c2 square we have bishop to e4 we have knight to d3 bishop to d3 rook to d3 rook to c8 you see we have played rook to b8 and rook to c8 it was sort of a loss of tempo here in the continuation here abimanyo tried uh knight to um knight to e3 rook to c5 and now of course rook to c2 creating the blockade against the spawn uh, now the spawn with knight to d1 of course can be taken in a couple more moves here in the continuation we have e5 uh rook to uh, d5 uh, trying of course to simplify the game here we have knight to uh, e6 rook takes c5 knight takes c5 and now knight to d1 finally abimanyu has the opportunity to grab the pawn even if you try to protect it further then of course we can simply take and um, then of course creating some checks getting behind so it's not a problem here to take out the pawn so here in the game knight to d3 we have now knight to um uh, knight to c3 we have um um, f takes e takes f4 we have rook to d2 attacking the knight bishop to c3 and now after rook to d3 this game is basically over the bishop is attacked of course uh, it's a completely winning end game here first after move bishop to b4 here abimanyo of course improves the position of his king we have g5 and now a very important move rook to d7 cutting off the potential activity by the king here in the continuation we have uh, a5 king to e2 g4 uh, rook to d4 attacking the pawn now f3 had to be played we have here um, g takes f3 uh g takes f3 king to f3 and in this position uh agosto new has resigned so brilliant brilliant game you see chess is really really wild uh, but the brilliant game by, by manu mishra i really liked this idea uh to sacrifice some pawns just in order to get the knight on d6 then trapping the rook really brilliant uh middle game tactic sort of to get uh, get the exchange uh, to, to continue the game of course with a better piece still you see this guy is our playing you has also found great counter-attack possibilities found also uh here's the opportunities to create this uh, supported pass point really really brilliant stuff then abimanyu played some correct uh great defensive moves and won the game eventually and as i said abimanyu is now in the lead of the tournament in hungary he will probably even win the, the event and uh as i said i wish him all of the best i wish him that he stays calm that he stays focused that he's not um, being so sort of an upper guy stayed calm i think he uh, and everything will be perfectly fine with his career so okay i hope that you enjoyed this video i really enjoyed this fact that uh, now we have a new world record if you want to see the previous games that we have analyzed by abimanyu because i've also analyzed his games two years ago when abimanyu became uh, the world's youngest international master in chess history i'm really glad that i covered his career sort of a little bit then i've covered also some other games by abimanyu so i'm really glad that i followed at least for a little bit uh, his career because he deserves all of our respect he deserves not 
now also to be in our focus and i wish him as i said all of the best i repeat myself a little bit i'm sorry but uh i'm really glad that something like this uh, still can happen in the chess world so okay here's the link of our previous analyzed games by abimanyo risha you can check them out there were also some brilliant games and if you want to see maybe some other chess prodigies check out my chess prodigy list with some other great games by uh, talented players and if you like this content don't forget to subscribe to my channel see you soon with some more videos and uh, chess is the best of course